Welcome to stage two. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you. We're going to grab our source images that we took in episode one, and we're now going to try and develop a print or a print layout using those images. And you'll understand why we took them from different angles uh, in a minute. Let me just open one of these pictures up. Here we go. Okay, so this is one of the roses. It's quite cool. And um, unfortunately, I can't make a print out of this. It's got all this kind of crap in the background. What I want to do is try and cut this shape out so that I can utilize it and use it and replicate it and transform it and resize it and do all kinds of things to it in Photoshop. Um, the very the quickest way that I can do that is if you go into your um, your dialog box over here, you've got this um, this kind of lasso tool. And if you use magnetic lasso tool, the whole principle with this is that if you have a solidly defined outline, i.e. when two colors are greatly opposing, in other words, this is a definite line, then this magic magnetic tool will, if you click on that line, it will then, see that? It'll link to that line very, very quickly and very easily. It's a fantastic tool. Or right, if you go off, it's, it's not going to handle it so much, but you can always hit backspace a few times. Okay, and we can just take it around again. So the idea is just to cut this out very quickly. And sometimes if it needs a bit of assistance, you can click to guide it. But I'm not going to do that because this is such a great outline. See how quick this is. It's very, very simple, very easy. It's better than lots of ways that you could possibly do this. It's not amazingly accurate, but it's pretty close. So what we can do is once we've um, <coughs> outlined this, with our selection, we're then just going to get rid of the background or copy and paste it into a new document. Either way, there we go. Simple. See, that's got the selection tool. You can always go back in with your, I don't know how you say that, polygonal, <laughs> polygonal lasso tool, and uh, take bits off or add bits on. Alt is to minus the selection, and shift is to add to the selection. Let me just show you there. This is holding it down. See that? On that little bit there as well. Okay, perfect. On oh, no, a little bit. Okay, so that's our cutout selection. So what I'm going to do is is um, simply go sh Shift Control I all together, and that will invert the selection. So our our selected area is now the background. I'm just going to hit Delete, and then we have one cutout rose. Okay, I can now play with this. I can give it a transparent background just by erasing the background. I can hit Control T. I can now start to see that resize it. I can rotate it. I can, you know, warp it. I can do lots of different things to it, depending on what I need it to do. Um, the reason why I'm doing it on the computer is because I could possibly print lots, you know, hundreds of these out and start cutting them out individually, and uh, you know, photocopying them, resizing them, reshaping them, whatever else. But not only is that not green, it's uh, it's going to waste huge amounts of paper, massive amounts of time, because the time it's taking me to cut that out, imagine doing that over and over and over and over again with a pair of scissors. This is the best, easiest, quickest way of playing around with prints uh, over a paper and pen method. Okay, so now we've got that. I'm going to simply do this to all of my roses, and um, you'll see that in a minute, because that's going to take about maybe, I don't know, half an hour, let's say. Okay, well now I have uh, cut out all of these images. I, see, I can show you here, and I've saved them so they have a the white or transparent background. So I can literally just drag and drop them into uh, my print page. Some of them uh, I wasn't too happy with, so I haven't actually bothered to do them. Or some of them were a bit too blurred. For example, I mean, well, that's not too bad, but basically I need ones which aren't that blurred, just because um, you'll see later. Because I'm going to use them as photographs. I'm not going to artwork them too heavily. Well, for some of the prints anyway. As you can see, I've already done a few bits here. So uh, let me take you in and show you um, what I've done. <clears throat> All right, basically, here we go. This is my print page, let's say. It's about 100 centimeters by about 100 centimeters. Just so I've got a good area to work with. <clears throat> Uh, at the moment, you can see I've literally just dragged and dropped them all in, or copied and pasted them all into this one page. I mean, this obviously doesn't look anything like a print at the moment. It's uh, just a collection of flowers and roses and bits and bobs. But as you can see here, look, I'm starting to build up uh, little print motifs, and this is the whole point about this. It's starting to kind of drag and drop, and you know, kind of like free transform. 
and then make them a bit bigger, kind of drop them in. Alright, I'm just playing around at the moment. This is this isn't a great print at the moment, but it's just to show you the kind of idea of how we do this. It's very, very simple. Okay, and they're all on separate layers. If you see down here, they're all copied and pasted in as separate layers. I guess I could name them, but uh, there's a lot of layers. <clears throat> and what we're going to do, what, rows one, rows two, rows with a bit of pink? Nah, it's not going to work. Um, okay, so let me take you in and show you the next step after all this. Okay, so um, I've been playing around with those uh, with those pattern pieces, uh, not pattern pieces, sorry, the uh, the roses, and it seems like I need, the layout isn't working particularly well, I need something that's going to help me or guide me when it comes to placing my flowers and in, and in what kind of order and, and how they're tilted, so the best way I can possibly do this is to bring...